When I was a kid, I wanted to be two things. Firstly, I wanted to be a car designer. And secondly, I wanted to be a superhero. So it took 30 years for me to get the uh, education I needed to be a car designer and get a job in a car design studio. But it only took the last 18 months for me to get superpowers. Now, let me show you what I mean. In a moment, I'm going to step into this VR design studio. And using these superpowers, I'm going to design a car in under 10 minutes, uh, live here on stage, in full scale, in 3D. What could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> um, I'll be seeing this view at all times uh, when I put this headset on, which just means I'll be fully immersed in the space. But my um, glamorous assistant, James, over here, has got a couple of other views that he can use, which, like this one, a kind of damped version of what I'm seeing, which is just going to help you guys follow what I'm doing. Now, the other problem with presenting from VR is connecting with an audience, right? So to solve that, we've uh, <laughs> popped these guys on, <laughs> just so that you all can see where I'm looking and what's going on. So I step into the space, and uh, the first thing I notice is my first superpower, and that is that I'm entirely invisible. I have no arms, I have no legs, I've got no body. In fact, this is probably, you know, good timing, the thinnest I've ever looked. So uh, James here has uh, loaded a, a full-size sketch on the wall here. He's, he's put it into the right size, and the problem with sketches like this as a designer is that you can exaggerate some of the proportions. You can, you know, those wheels, now that I see it at full scale, they look absolutely massive. So what I really need in this space is some real world engineering data, something that I can reference while I'm drawing. So James, could you load me in um, that electric uh, car chassis that we talked about? Thank you. Swap these guys around. So James has loaded in an electric platform here with a battery underneath and three seats, a bit like a McLaren F1 with a central driving position. So I've got some real world parameters and I've got my inspiration up on the board here. And now I'm ready to start really creating in the space. So in this world, I can draw in 3D anywhere in free space like that. And I can pick that up. But before I start putting in some bodywork and James, uh, Actually, leave that in for a second. I'm going to just check that these wheels are as massive as they look compared to the real world data. So I can pop that line here. And actually, while I'm over here, you know what? I might just nick this nice spoke detail here. You can see I can pick it up and then I can duplicate that around the wheel and just reposition them, sort of checking what I'm doing as I go. Oh, there we go. And then if I group that guy up, I can then take this as an object over to the car. And see, yeah, just as I suspected, it's absolutely ginormous. So I'll pop that on there, and then I'll put this one at the back. And there we've got our wheels sketched in. So James, if you could just turn off the engineering, just so that I've got just a set of wheels, so I can start doing this body work. So, just putting some lines in very roughly. And actually, it doesn't take a lot of these to just describe the form of a car. So there's a bit of a bonnet line from the front there. I've also got another superpower, which is I can turn myself into a giant. It's quite hard for you guys to see, but now the space is half a size, effectively I'm double the size. And I can just start picking up these lines and popping them over the car like this. So there's a bit of a nose. I might put in the bottom of the windscreen here, just keeping a checking, checking that sketch, that bit of graphic that I've caught. Super quickly, I'm able to just rough in the shape there's a nice big shoulder line through there. And actually, I might just use that one a couple of times down here. Now, you may have seen me sort of moving around the space a lot more than I'm moving around on the stage. And if I do fall off, please catch me. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop these in. That is because my third superpower is that I can travel at the speed of light in this world. And even if I go full scale, I also can walk through walls. So you see that? It means even on a stage that's three meters by three meters, I can check that really important uh, stance and proportion of a vehicle, which is the relationship between the lines and the wheels and the ground plane. And then I can actually, I can kind of travel all the way around it and have a really good look at what I'm doing. I've obviously missed the whole back end, so. 
forgive me, let me just pop that in. A couple more lines, and I'm not far off done with the sketch section. So that describes, can you see a car there? Yeah. A couple more over here. So now, actually, what I want to do is make this a bit tidier. I'm just going to, just going to put those details in. A bit tidier. I'm going to bring in another tool which allows me to build on top of that sketch with something much more precise. So you can see this white line I've just brought in. Super intuitively, I can grab the points on that line and then I can move it around and place it on the vehicle. And that is a much more precise, much more clean line than these sort of super loose sketch lines that I'm doing. Might pop, pop one in here while I'm there, right across the car, and then just start building. Pop that one under the glass. Maybe even use him a couple of times, put him down here, over here. But designing a car is obviously not a one-man job. So wouldn't it be lovely if I could uh, collaborate in this space with anyone, someone somewhere else in the world? Uh, you know what? Every superhero needs his sidekick, right? So, James, if you could just dial in Craig for me. Let's see if we can welcome in Craig. Ah, here's Craig. Hey, Rich. How are you doing? Good, thanks. So, I must say that you uh, may recognize from his accent that Craig is actually up in our Scotland office right now, live, in the same setup as this. Um, we're networked over the internet, and actually, in real life, Craig doesn't have like a big balloon head and pointy sticks as hands, you know. He's, got, he's, he's a real human. Um, Craig, is it okay if you help me finish this off? Because actually, I don't think I've got time to do this on my own, and it'd be lovely if you could just put in some of the lines, maybe work on that back corner for me. Yeah, of course. Great. Fantastic. What do, you, um, what do you think of it so far? What do you think of the design? Be nice. Yeah, I really think it's starting to come together. Awesome. One concern, though, um, do you think you could see out of this thing? Ah, that's a good point. So, James, if you load in the engineering data again, just pop number two on. I'm going to step inside the car because I can walk through stuff. And it's going to look really weird for the audience because I've got to sort of kneel down on the stage and pretend I'm driving. But I can get inside the car like this, and then, you know, looking at all these lines up here, maybe I've got a, uh, this as a headlining, which is the kind of line I want to put in. James, if you just load in a traffic light for me, please. There we go. So that's a standard traffic light, and that's one of the things that denotes where these lines should be. You need to be able to see out of a car to drive it properly. And actually, Craig, you're right, I would need to put that really far back like that. In fact, why don't you jump in, buddy, and uh, we'll go on a little road trip, shall we? <laughs> nice. Yeah, why not? That's lovely. So, how are you feeling comfortable back there? Yes, it it's, uh, feels very sporty. I mean, we could, we could do this for hours, couldn't we? So, I see Craig's starting to put in a bit, in the, a bit of the interior there, and maybe I'll you know, pop in a couple of dials. But actually, Craig, I don't think we've really got that much time to do the full interior, so let's jump back out. And, James, if you just turn off the uh, engineering data again for me. So what I'm going to do is carry so on building. Rich, on. For, for the benefit of the audience, how, how does this differ from traditional CAD? That's a good point. It is very much like traditional CAD, but in here, I'm around the full-scale thing, which means I can make informed decisions about where I'm putting the lines based on its scale. Also, buddy, we're, we're pretty much inside the computer with the model, right? And that's very different to being in CAD. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like we're standing in the room beside the car. It does feel like we're standing around a real car. And that's, that's also a good point, because normally in the industry, to get to the point where you're standing around your design, you have to spend quite a lot of money and time and effort to do a clay model, a full-size clay model. And that stuff is really, really powerful and actually takes years and years to master the skill of doing a clay model. But um, what that does give the designers is a real sense of the volume of something. And to get a bit of sense of volume in here in a much more sort of sketchy way, what I can do is start pulling in some surfaces once I've put these lines on. We're doing okay for time, I think. So, if I just grab this line here, I don't know why Craig's on the floor. Are you okay, mate? <laughs> <laughs> so if I just grab uh, a surface like this and pull it straight off that line across the, the hole of the top of the car, 
I can connect it to this next line. And that means that those two lines there are driving the shape of this uh, surface, but I can also affect the, the surface itself in between those lines, as you can see. And that means that super quickly, I'm able to just pop in some of the surface that really kind of show, and you can see Craig's putting in the back ones here, really show the volume of this vehicle. So there's another one here. Maybe do these big shoulder lines. I might not be able to finish this in time, Craig, so you may have to sort of carry on with this, but I might just do this front bonnet, just so you don't ruin my design, you know? <laughs> Our design, I'm, I should say, of course. There's no we. <laughs> so you can see that it's really easy and super intuitive to just move those surfaces around. And if I step back again and have a good look at that, you can see that there's pretty much a reasonable representation of a car. I'm not really liking the front end, but that's obviously to do with my job. <laughs> well, let's pop these back here and then just finish off a couple of these. Yeah, so Craig, if you could, buddy, that'd be great if you could just pop around the front at the end as well and um, finish that off, because I'm going to jump out of this studio and uh, talk to these guys about what I think about some of the future of these tools. Is that okay? Of course. Thanks. I can't help but just finish a, bit, a little bit more. Sorry. <laughs> I, can't, I can't let him do this bit. I just can't let him do it. So I'll pull that over there. Great, yeah, so. Whew, that's hot. That's very hot inside that studio. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, and that's one of the points about VR is at the moment you have to use a kind of very plasticky, sweaty headset, but... I believe that in the future of this technology, uh, we're going to see augmented reality is already happening, right? Augmented reality where uh, glasses overlay this, these virtual worlds over our real world. That's kind of already here. But the technology is shrinking, and it's becoming small enough to start to maybe think about embedding it in things like contact lenses. And I see a future where, in fact, it's going to end up as an implant inside your actual eye as we welcome it into our bodies. Um, and you know, other technologies that may affect this kind of workflow are things like artificial intelligence. Imagine if my next little sidekick is a kind of super intelligent AI design bot, and he kind of helps me not only put surfaces in and put lines in, but maybe based on my design history, some of the sketches it knows I've done, perhaps he suggests ideas to me as well through his AI and machine learning. You know, this world is coming, and if we embrace this technology, then all it's going to do is give everybody more superpowers, and it will give us the space to, you know, concentrate on those complicated human factors, those emotional design factors that we're really good at concentrating on. And ultimately, it will give us all the freedom to be way more creative. And thank you very much. <laughs>